This here is the Orchid Tiny Turbo 286. I thought I'd show this off as a random video thing. Uh, and then if you're interested in it, then I could potentially make a whole proper video on it. But it's pretty, it's pretty neat little card. It's, it's half height or half width or whatever you'd call them back in the day. And it was designed for the IBM PC and PC XT. So um, it came out around the time when the 80 was all the rage. The big thing was the 5170 or the 286 machines. This here is a 286 chip by Siemens by the looks of it. It's an 80286-N. I don't know if I can make that focus, but anyway, that's an 80286-N, which apparently is an 8 megahertz uh, CPU. And this here is the um, 808, uh, 808. Um, actually, this particular one is an NEC V20, but effectively the same processor. Uh, so basically, the switch on the outside allows you to switch between fast function and slow function. So I think in that down position, you're slow, and then if you switch up, it will reset the entire PC, switch over the CPU, and switch it on to the uh, 286 CPU. So all in all, apparently the the manual which I have read, um, or I've read the start of it at least, makes some busy, busy uh, wild claims. It says that um, the machine will actually make it run faster than the IBM AT. Now the original IBM AT clocked in at just 6 megahertz on a 286, but it did have a 16-bit bus, not an 8-bit bus. Um, it had one weight state or maybe zero weight states if you had the, f the, the newer 8 megahertz versions. But this makes claim that it is faster than the IBM AT, which I find a little bit hard to believe. It does have a switch here, a jumper switch, which allows you to choose between 8 megahertz, which is selected, and 5 megahertz. And why you want to select 5 megahertz, I'm not 100% sure, but maybe if you had some speed uh, consistent um, application or something like that, you might want to use that to force compatibility. It also has the 80287 10, that's the math coprocessor on there, so it both has the 286 CPU but also the 287. So, again, if you're using something like Lotus 123 and you need floating point math or something like that, that would make it run faster than a stock IBM PC 5170 without the Math Co Pro. Um, so I guess that could be quite useful. But the whole point of these cards is that they were quite affordable and allowed you to upgrade a 20, uh, sorry, an 8088 machine, an XT or PC, without very much fuss at all. You could simply just plug it in and uh, it would plug into your CPU slot. So you take out your CPU, your 8088, uh, you pl plug the 8088 here on this sort of riser board and then the machine would just op operate away and uh, pretty pretty simple upgrade to be honest with you. I don't know what these retail for but I, if I was to make a full video on them then I could uh, certainly find that sort of stuff out. This is pretty um, easily broken this cable. I can see that pin's already slightly bent on it so I've got to be real careful with it. But ultimately, yeah, it's a pretty cool card, works a treat. What I am a bit surprised with is the lack of a clock. I can't see a crystal on this. Um, maybe I'm just not looking hard enough, but I can't see anything on the board there that resembles a crystal. Even underneath that riser there, it looks like a resistor pack. And that's about it. So yeah, quite interesting uh, how simplistic it is. These are just, um, I actually don't know what these chips are. Um, there's Sony ones and Texas Instruments ones and all sorts of stuff so I guess I'd have to look up what all of those do. But yeah, pretty simple board, quite small, quite yeah, easy to use. There's uh, a limited set of jumpers on there which I don't actually know what the purpose is. 
so I'll have to look them up. But yeah, I've tested this board, it works a treat. I've used it for quite a number of years. And there are alternatives to this board. There are manufacturers making boards that were similar in nature and all work pretty well. Um, so some of these I guess will maybe be cash chips, uh, which may increase the performance as well. But I don't think that it would ever really fully increase the speed to something that exceeded the AT because the AT, especially the clone machines, the later 286s, had probably zero weight states or one weight state, whereas the, the XT on the 8-bit bus uh, versus the 16-bit would have those weight states and would be on an 8-bit bus. Um, so there's a whole bunch of trade-offs that you are making here by upgrading a XT machine, which is 8-bit bus, rather than having a proper 16-bit uh, low weight state so yeah I mean it gets you most of the way there at least so still a cool option for a lot of people who needed that extra speed boost in the uh, sort of mid to late 80s and couldn't afford to buy a fully new machine.